Well, wasn't that a great start? The only problem, there wasn't enough trombone. So can we do it again? And can we have some more trombone this time? Remember, Jim's listening. It's a privilege and a pleasure on behalf of the family to welcome you all here this afternoon to remember the life and to give thanks for Jim, for everything he did, for who he was. It's been great as I've been wandering around hearing various stories from people on and off the platform about Jim. Just what a friend he was and all the little things that you don't actually hear until an occasion like this. People that were really friendly, um, people that he encouraged in the background, all these kind of things. So it's really lovely to hear all these stories. And this afternoon is a Thanksgiving. So Thanksgivings are happy times because we know where Jim is. He's with his Lord, whom he served for years and years and years. In fact, a few people have said, I wonder how much money he enabled this corps to raise over all these years. Be great if we could find out. It must be a fabulous amount. But that was just one of the many things that he did. It is disappointing that Mary can't be with us. Um, she had to go to casualty um, this morning. Um, she had an operation a couple of weeks ago. And I had a bit of a problem this morning, so she's in casualty. About quarter past 11, we heard that she is at least in a cubicle. So uh, she is now being seen. Um, but uh, this service of Thanksgiving will actually be recorded. So she will be able to see it and hear it. But I'm sure our thoughts and prayers are with Mary, especially at this particular time. So thank you on behalf of the family um, for coming. It's good to have all of you here. I will turn around every so often because I don't want to miss all these good folk out up here. And I'll keep looking over in the trombone section. So don't go to sleep, Gordon. <laughs> but I also want to say thanks to Course Sergeant Major David Henderson and the people in Clyde Bank um, who have also made this possible. Thank you very much indeed. Band have opened with something bright, now we're going to sing, and everything that is on the order of service for this afternoon has been chosen by the family. And we're going to sing, Great is the darkness that covers the earth, oppression, injustice, and pain. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Pour out your spirit, we pray. So let's stand, please, shall we? The words will be on the screen. And if you're using the Salvation Army songbook, it's number 220. Let's stand, please, and follow the bandmaster.
And now a prayer. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this afternoon and firstly we thank you for your love. We thank you, Father, that you sent your Son, Jesus, to purchase our salvation. We thank you, Jesus, for coming and willingly going to the cross. And we thank you that when you ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit was left, the comforter, the one to come alongside, the one to put his arms around us, the one to point us to Jesus. We thank you, Father, for raising up the church. And especially today, we think of the Salvation Army and we thank you for those early pioneers who came from Dalmuir and started the work in Clydebank. Father, thank you for all the ministry that has gone on from here. We think of various names from the past, people who have enabled the mission to continue. And one of those is, of course, Jim Anderson. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity we have had of knowing him, of loving him, of seeing his service. Much of it done in the background, encouraging and planning. Thank you, Father, for the influence that Jim has had on so many of us. And as we are here this afternoon, Father, we bring Mary before you. We pray, Father, that you will work your healing power through the doctors and nurses. But also, not only thinking of Mary, we think of Agnes. And Father, we thank you for her and for her ministry through all those years. Be with us each as we share this time together. And as we hear various spoken memories, and as things flood into our minds, and as conversations have already happened and will do, Father, we just thank you for the opportunity we have of being here today to celebrate the servant of God. Bless us now, Father, and guide us and guard us as we continue to spend this time together in your house. I pray this in and through the name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. The band was obviously something that was important in Jim's life and he contributed many, many years as a Salvation Army bandsman and the band are going to play the march Star Lake written by Eric Ball. This march was written, all the parts were written, it was rehearsed in two to three hours at the Star Lake Music Camp in the USA. And Eric Ball says, this is it to be taken light-hearted and happy. So that's the instructions from the composer, Bandmaster. So it's over to you and the band, Star Lake.
great, light-hearted and happy. Thank you very much indeed. If we were to give opportunity for tributes to be given this afternoon, we would still be here this evening. So um, bandmaster, retired bandmaster Peter Fuller um, worked very closely with Jim for a number of years and I think was his bandmaster for over 50 years. Um, and Peter's now going to come and say a few words. <laughs> Ivan knows I'm always very quiet and don't have much to say, so... On a more serious note, I do count it a privilege today to uh, speak about my old friend, James Cunningham Anderson. Oh, how nice that, isn't it? James Cunningham Anderson. But I think we'll just call him Jim. He was born and bred in Dalmuir. He lost his father when Jim was only eight, and therefore he was brought up by his mother, it was in 1967 that I first met Jim when I came to the core here at Clybank. And in the subsequent 54 years, I was able to watch a man of God diligently going about his work in the core, always committed and conscientious in everything that he had to do. Jim held many local officer positions in the core, usually when no one else would do it. So he was treasurer twice, core sergeant major, core organizing secretary, songster leader, deputy bandmaster, and band secretary. He could have had his own census board, in fact. His work as core treasurer was well renowned throughout the army by major army leaders, including General Eva Burroughs. His ability to organize fundraising events sale of works, building funds benefit the core by many thousands of pounds. And one soon learned that you did not say no to Jim, as I found out to my regret when I was re just arrived at the core. Jim said to me, we've got a sale of work and um, I need someone to wear the red suit. And I said, oh, okay, okay. Little did I know that in wearing the red suit, I had to be taken to Drumrai train station, fully dressed out with my sack on my back and be put on a train at Drumrai to get off at Singer station. And then I thought that was my agony finished. When I got off at Singer's, there was a lorry with a throne on the top. <laughs> and I had to climb up this blooming lorry I was then transported throughout the whole of Clydebank and every street, I think, where I had to ring my bell. Jim was very keen on fundraising, as you all know, and he helped so much with the Singh Company's trip to Paris many years ago. And also, he helped me with the band tours of Copenhagen, Iceland, and Sweden. Jim was a great family man, married to Agnes for 42 years, and together they had two daughters, Carol and Elaine, smiling there, well, nearly. He was particularly keen to spend time with his family, and he loved playing tricks on his grandchildren. I think I've seen a picture of him crawling along the floor with grandchildren on his back. Some years after um, Agnes's passing, I was visiting Jim in the old Robert Burns, whatever it was called, street. And uh, he took me aside. He had a bit of flu. And he said to us, um, does the band have an engagement on a certain date in the next couple of months? And I said, no, 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 that's quite, it's quite open, Jim. We're all right there. He said, Oh, that's fine, he said, because I plan to get married that night. <laughs> I won't tell you what I said to him. 
But Mary and Jim managed to uh, spend 18 years together. I was going to say, Mary's not here, but I think she may hear it, a tribute to her devoted care for, for Jim, especially over the last few years when he's been particularly ill and many times in a hospital. His banding was a great passion for Jim, played all his life at Clybank, apart from his compulsory national service, the younger ones might not know what that is, and a few months prior to marrying Agnes, when the very wise bandmaster Borthwick of great fame in Clybank suggested that Jim should go to Parkhead for a few weeks and months to be with Agnes. The only proviso was that once the wedding had been, that the both of them must transfer back to Clybank, which of course is what happened. He played nearly all his days on trombone, apart from a short period on flugelhorn, when no one else would do it. But I don't think he lasted long, about six months, I think. He was a delight to have as a bandsman, because whatever you asked Jim to do, he would just do it. He wouldn't argue. Sometimes I had got a quizzical look from him, like, what's this about? But then he would still do it. We were once playing at the Scottish Congress with Claybank Band, and we decided that one of our items would be a fun item, instead of being very straight. And some of the band decided they would dress up. And I said to Jim, what are you going to wear, Jim? He said, I have a surprise for you, which worried me a bit. And on the Scottish Congress, with thousands of people there, here was Jim arranged, arrayed with a chicken hat on his head. Now, this chicken hat was very special. It had two drawstrings underneath. And when you pulled them, it made a chicken noise. <laughs> well, Jim played the part very well. And, of course, he pulled the house down. He was so good at his chicken impression that he persuaded me to also include the same item in Copenhagen, Denmark. What the Danes made of it? <laughs> Heaven only knows. Later in his banding, he was also a significant member of the Scottish Fellowship Band for over 20 years. In latter years, when I was often out with Jim, he used to renege me with tales of John Brown's and John Brown Engineering, where he worked nearly all his days. He also talked about the town of Clydebank and the Blitz and so on. And of course, he talked about the Clydebank Corps. He told me when he was in the RAF, um, many tales that I really couldn't repeat here. But um, he did say that whilst on national service, he'd done so well on the trombone Mm, yes. Um, he was called to the RAF Central Band headquarters and was asked to do uh, an audition to see how he got on. Well, of course, Jim being Jim, he passed the audition, no problem. And he was called to the office to sign the papers ready for his transfer to the RAF Central Band. Well, fate stepped in or somebody stepped in somewhere, just before he signed the form, the man said to him, you do know that the minimum turn in the RAF Central Band is seven years. And Jim said, hmm, not for me, thank you, bye-bye. And off he went back to his ordinary band. Trying to sum up Jim is difficult. He was a loving man, family man, a man of integrity, commitment, dedication, I, I do believe, not only to the core here at Clybank, but all to his, to his Lord. Jim will be missed by many, particularly his close family and friends. But I believe that his influence will live on here, and uh, the stories of Jim will go on for a long, long time. And so I conclude. 
Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thank you, Peter, for those heartfelt words. It means a lot to the family. And I know Jim meant such a lot to you as well. So thank you, Peter. One of Jim's favourite pieces was Light of the World. This is a piece of music written around a painting by Holman Hunt where Jesus is depicted as standing outside the closed door of our heart. In the picture, the door is covered with vines and brambles. And one art critic apparently commented to the artist, there is no handle on the door. To which Holman Hunt said, that's right. Because the only way to open the door of your heart is from the inside. The words are on the side of the order of service that relate to the music. And as you will hear from the very beginning, from the horn section, and then throughout this piece, there is a knocking. Depicting Jesus knocking at the door of our heart. This was special for Jim because he knew the truth, not only liked the music, but he knew the truth of this. So the band are now going to play to us Light of the World.
music moves you, doesn't it? Longtime friend George Howie is going to bring to us one of Jim's favourite Bible readings, Psalm 23. And in the last number of years, when Jim was in the fellowship band, George would always come round and pick Jim up and take him along to the fellowship band. But George could speak for hours, I'm sure, of all of the great times with Jim. So um, George is privileged and wants to read the scripture reading for us, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Tears my eyes. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, but you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you, George. We spent quite some time looking at um, what piece we should actually get the songsters to sing, because Jim, of course, was songster leader for a number of years, and as Peter rightly said, nobody else wanted the job. So Jim volunteered, and uh, he led the songsters ably for a number of years. The song that's been chosen for the songsters to sing, and thank you for doing that, I Dare to Be Different. The first verse, I dare to live the life of faith, the life of challenge God has planned, of holiness and victory, for truth and righteousness to stand. It's almost as if that's Jim's testimony. That's certainly what he did. So the songsters are now going to sing to us, I Dare to Be Different.
Thank you very much indeed, songsters, for that wonderful testimony. Jim didn't speak a lot and wouldn't like a sermon. I wouldn't like to give a sermon. He had to do that from time to time. But there's no sermon this afternoon. Thank you, band. <laughs> and instead, I just want us to think on one phrase that was in that song. By living like Christ. If we had any kind of phrase, and we can think of lots to apply to the life of this wonderful man, my father-in-law, Jim Anderson. That's one that I would use. He didn't talk the talk. He walked the life that God had planned for him. May we do that in our lives. Closing song, Simply Trusting Every Day, 892 in your songbook if you have it there. Simply Trusting Every Day. That would also be Jim's testimony as well. Trusting through a stormy way, even when my faith is small, trusting Jesus, that is all. And of course, we've got to have it to the tune, Will You Know, Come Back Again. And we need to stand as we sing it together. Thank you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son and Holy Ghost. And Father, it's you we have been worshipping as we have heard this afternoon about one of your servants. Father, enable us to be faithful to do your work 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To conclude, the final salute by the band is the march Mighty to Save, a good old-fashioned Salvation Army march. And, of course, with that message again, Jesus is mighty to save. And uh, the bandmaster has asked deputy, the retired bandmaster, Peter Fuller, to conduct this, who I'm sure will want to get a lot from the trombones. Thank you, and may God bless you.